In the year 1978, Honda decided to take their two best sellers in America, the Honda Accord and the Honda Civic. They tore them apart. They took the best of both worlds from both cars, put them into one car, and just like Frankenstein, they made a monster. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! That monster was called the Prelude, and it was America's first taste of some wonderful Honda sports car action. Now, the first generation of Honda Prelude wasn't all that great, and not many people bought them back then because Americans were not thinking about buying Japanese cars to go fast, they were thinking about buying them to save gas. That's a bar. On top of that, most Americans didn't even look at this as a sports car because it only came in a 1.8 liter inline four that made. Are you ready for this? 76 horsepower son yes that's right there was once a time where honda considered 76 horsepower fast and it blows me away but that's kind of just the thing yes this car was not fast in the way that most americans thought was fast but it actually was pretty quick once you took it to some twisty boy turns and that would be honda's main selling point on this car and most of their other sports cars for years to come sure this car was not going to beat that chevy camaro in a quarter mile and it definitely wasn't going to beat that mustang around an oval but with the right driver behind the wheel it sure could give it a run for its money within the twisty canyons But let's be honest here, the first generation Prelude really was pretty slow. And on top of that, they looked they looked they looked kind of weird, not going to lie. They also were mainly competing with the Toyota Celica, which let's be honest, was much more sporty looking and appealing to a mass audience and so most people opted for the celica instead of the prelude but luckily honda did not give up on the idea and instead they went back to the drawing board and made some revisions to not only the looks of the car but also the platform it drove on introducing the second generation honda prelude the honda prelude some people like to drive it wide open So for the looks of the second gen, they literally completely redesigned it from the ground up, taking no inspiration from the last gen at all, except for the fact that they wanted to keep it with a long hood. That was the one exception. They wanted that hood to be long and narrow. So they made the long hood much more narrow to give it that look of being lower, got rid of the fixed headlights to make pop-up headlights in order to reduce drag, which ironically made way more drag when they were popped up, but Honda didn't think of that. And they made the windows bigger because I guess people who want to buy sports cars like big windows who knows why they did that part I am not too sure but the engine was a massive increase as well it went from the 76 horsepower in a 1.8 liter to a 2 liter in line 4 so 0.2 whole more liters and that managed to make 110 horsepower woohoo baby now we're cooking on top of that yes we are not done they also equipped this puppy with not a single but double wishbone suspension in the front which massively helped with understeer and they gave it disc brakes son obviously neither of those things are really matter today and aren't that super cool today and they're like on every single car but back then back in the freaking 80s that was like tesla level of technology coming from honda and it was an insane increase imagine from two generations a car goes 34 horsepower higher with double wishbone suspension and disc brakes also guess what with all these added upgrades and benefits they couldn't just call it the prelude again that would be silly who would do that so they called it the prelude 2.0 si yes that's right gunther this is the actual first ever si model that honda ever built and for some sad reason nobody cares why doesn't anybody care it's the first ever si like si is so popular now and the prelude was the first one to do it also honda did what they set out to do with this car they wanted to sell a sports car to the american market and have it be successful this car was successful as all hell in not only japan but america as well we finally realized that it wasn't all about power so good job anybody from the 1980s that decided to pick up a japanese sports car instead of a camaro but Honda being Honda, they did not stop there. Honda is not the type of dude to win a fight and then immediately retire. No siree, Bob. Honda is the type of gentleman that likes to defend their titles. So in 1988, they did it again. They gave us the wonderful third generation Honda Prelude. 
and holy moly did they massively improve on this one as well they obviously wanted to improve the design and so they started sharing styling cues with the damn nsx yes that nsx they shared styling with that nsx they made it much more lower looking while keeping the pop-up headlights for drag coefficiency which once again kind of increased drag once they were popped up and they kept the hood incredibly long on top of that they put the double wishbone suspension in the rear of the car as well as the front to make it even more stable they also made the engine a fart stain bigger turning it into a 2.1 liter inline four instead of the two liter inline four in the second gen but that managed to make another 25 horsepower out of it bumping it all the way up to 135 horsepowers with all these revisions you would think that would be enough right you're like that that's enough honda we can we can stop now we just made a freaking great sports car incorrect spongebob they also decided to make this the first ever mass-produced car to have four wheel steering which incredibly helped with low speed maneuvers and at higher speeds the back wheels actually turned the same way as the front wheels making it an even better canyon carving tow game monster now with all these revisions and the added bonus of more horsepower and four wheel steering honda expected 30 percent of buyers to opt for the honda prelude when they went to the dealership and what happened next you won't believe click this video to find out 80% of buyers went with the Prelude, buddy. The car was a freaking runaway overnight success. So, Honda was like, holy crap, we just made the best car we ever could have made with this third generation Prelude, right? God, dude, you really got to do your research because you're incorrect again. The fourth generation Prelude came out in 1993 and it was even better. And anti-lock brakes. The new Honda Prelude SI makes driving a more illuminating experience there's one single word that you guys haven't heard me say all video and you're probably scratching your heads wondering where it is and that word is vtech Yes, that's right, buddy old pal. Honda finally decided to give their flagship sports car VTEC while simultaneously bumping up the engine size to be an even bigger motor. Instead of a 2.1 liter inline four, it is now a 2.2 liter inline four, but with that crispy VTEC doke symbol on the valve cover. Dual overhead cams, buddy. And for those wondering, yes, VTEC really does make that big of a difference because it bumped the power up to a very respectable 190 horsepower in the freaking 90s, dude. That is a 55 horsepower jump from the previous third generation. That's pretty crazy. Now for the looks, it was once again a complete overhaul. It was the 90s and boxy cars were going out of style and people liked curves now, probably thanks to Dr. Dre and the rise of hip hop. So they made the car way more curved while maintaining the whole long hood but short trunk design that really gave it its signature prelude style. They made the front even more wide, they opted for fixed headlights instead of the cool but not so fast pop-up headlights, and they rounded out the back and gave it some Botox to make it pop a little bit, making it, in my personal opinion, the sportiest, best-looking model of Prelude. But in the year 1996, Honda had one more trick up its sleeve. They wanted to go out with a bang, and they made the fifth-generation Prelude. And somehow, in some way, the Prelude cult was kind of divisive on the new looks and that's because they went back to the more boxy styling and used these like minecraft steve heads as headlights they were huge just square headlights so it was kind of weird they also made it even longer while keeping that signature prelude long front end short rear end look once again they were honda so they decided to make it even faster but sadly not by enough only making 10 horsepower more than the previous generation which did make it that very satisfying 200 horsepower exactly but think about the fact that from the third gen to the fourth gen, there was a 55 horsepower increase. And then from the fourth gen to the fifth gen, there was only a 10 horsepower increase. It wasn't worth it to these people. And with a price tag of $45,000 in today's money, most people just chose to go with the Civic or the Accord, which meant that sadly, horribly, sales plummeted harder than freaking Dogecoin after Elon Musk sold all his, which made Honda realize that it was time to pull the plug on the car that truly started it all for them. That's, uh, that's a plug. You, you pulled the plug on me? So, since the Prelude never had the love that it had in the 80s, but within the 2000s when the internet was a thing, people flocked to the ones that did get the love on the internet, like the Civic or the Integra, leaving the Prelude as a thing of the past in the car community today. I hope I opened your eyes a bit to this wonderful little Honda that literally held the world in the palm of his hands at one point. And Honda, if you're watching this, 
Get rid of the new Integra and give us another Prelude, please. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Down in the description is going to be a link to another YouTube channel. It's my gaming channel. I'm going to start gaming over there, probably live streaming. Uh, the four games that I want to play are GTA Online, Wreckfest, Forza Horizon 5, and Car Extra Racing. Those are the four games that I really like playing, so those are the four games I'll probably play over there. And I could use content ideas for that. So let me know any content ideas you have for that. But yeah, go check it out. Subscribe if you want, if you like gaming and stuff with racing games. Go check it out. Sorry for my phone, by the way. And uh, Das Vidanya, have a nice night.